Let's talk about words for a minute. Easier said than done. I am a wordsmith, and I frequently have trouble finding the exact words. I'm going to show you a couple of examples for a minute, but first I want to show you how much I empathize, clearly understand how anyone for whom English is a second language finds that to be challenging. Let me show you what happened to me. My task was to explain to a group of actors that they needed to be sure that they read the words on the page, that they understood the words on the page, and that they remembered to create a recording using idioms. I was to write out those directions in several languages. Let me show you how my work turned out. This was my attempt to write out those directions in Spanish. This is how I tried to explain that in Russian, in Armenian, in Chinese, and in Farsi, and in African. Everyone had a big laugh, including me. It really gave me empathy for what people who are trying to learn the English language go through. So let's tackle this. How are we going to do this? Let's take a quick look. No matter what I'm writing, I always have open dictionary.com, thesaurus, which I, I don't use thesaurus that much, and I have a new tab for Google so that I can look up words and information. Now, true, I love looking up words. That's me. It may not be your favorite thing to do, but this is an English course, and so taking the time to look up a word is really quite interesting if you embrace the learning curve rather than the frustration. So let's take a look real quick. I'm writing a script, and I'm trying to figure out what they call this particular room it's in Ireland. I don't know what they call the room. I've described it in about 5,000 words, and now I have to cut that description down and figure out what that room is called. So I know now that the room is called the public room. I didn't know that. How did I find that out? Step one, I look for community centers in Ireland. I'm a visual learner, so I've looked up images, and I find this one that looks exactly like the little community center I'm writing about. So I go up here and I see public meetings and I'm thinking about the room that I'm creating and I think it's a public room. That's creative writing. But let's talk about experiences where you are going to read an article that is written in English and all of the words are not clearly recognizable. Let's look at one. I find an article about Shakespeare's life and times, and I'm reading along, and it's all making sense until I get to this. From registrar records, that looks bizarre, so I'm just going to copy this, just like this. Go to dictionary.com, which I already have open. I paste the word right in there, and there's the definition. And if I don't understand all the words and definition, I can keep clicking until I understand the concept. Let's do one more. I'm reading and I'm reading and it all makes sense. But then I come down here to this word. What does affluent mean? So I copy that. Go over to my definitions in dictionary.com. Simply paste that in. Look it up. And there's a definition. And here's the thing, you are brilliant. So when you find the word, you're going to remember that word. Or if later on that word comes up again and you can't remember exactly what it was, you can save those into a notepad and save them on your computer. I have files in my computer that are just created for new expressions that I learn or that I hear or new ways to describe something. 
One last little example, and then I'm going to let you go. Just one last quick thing. This is the essay that I wrote about Woodstock. It's my theory about the Woodstock 1969 concert. You can find that in the course where I demonstrate writing that. The point I want to make to you here is I just wanted to first write, like my friends, like all my friends, like they, like them, like those people. But instead, I found the right words to describe those people, flower power friends. All my friends were like, well, I had a lot of different kinds of friends, but they were like hippies or wannabe hippies. And so I found a way to describe them. Do you think I found that description in one second? No, it took me a little bit of time. Because I was, my tendency was just to say, like my friends, I wanted 1969 to be the year where I was heard, where I could make a difference. Okay, that sentence took a bit of time to write and then to edit. So I want to make that clear to you as you go along. Everybody, even people who write English essays or plays or novels or short stories or poetry, everybody has to edit what they've written. Everybody. And there are many times when I'm completely flustered and I can't figure out how to, where the words are that I need. And that's why when I write, I always have the dictionary open. I always have the thesaurus open, though I don't use it that much. And I always have my Google search. And I also have a timer because I will start a Google search on something scholastic and the next thing I know, I'm watching kittens play piano. So I have to keep timers on myself because I will just get sucked into learning something different than what I'm on task for. So you're, you're doing great. Just keep up the, the good work. And remember, take a break. Walk away from the computer if you get frustrated. frustrated. Come and see me during office hours. Call the library. Our librarians are eager to help. Call the writing center. There are people there that can help. I have no problem reaching out for, for help myself, and that's just me. But I just want you to know I completely empathize, and we got to push forward through that into the solution, which is reaching your brilliant potential and learning to find just the right word.